Hey, I'm Jay. I'm here with Gareth Baber, uh, head coach of the Fiji Rugby Sevens, who recently won the gold medal at the Tokyo 2020 slash 21 Olympics. Hey, Gar, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Jay. How are you? Good. So, uh, thanks for coming along, and we, we decided that we we're both going to um, uh, invest some time in just the background story of, 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 of what's occurred here, because it's been, uh, from my perspective, quite magical. Um, quite an extraordinary uh, process to be involved in um, and obviously you and I have built a, a, a good friendship during that period and I thought great great story to tell so um, I thought we'd do a three-part series so today's about the meaning the intention the vision um, so the, the, the first question I kind of got for you and, and, and feel free to ask me questions as well like like let's go back to the beginning why did you decide to take the role um, I think sort of off the back end of, of the previous Olympics uh, in Rio, where obviously Fiji won that gold medal, um, I knew that there was a lot of change happening in, 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 I suppose, the marketplace when it came to sevens rugby. I played sevens rugby for, for Wales, uh, was captain of Wales and then coach Wales. And obviously it was, it was in my blood, although I'd coached 15 side rugby for a number of years. But I was in a sevens position at that time, back end of 2016 in Hong Kong. Um, and at that point, I'd been there for three and a half years, it was sort of looking at the next challenge. Um, and uh, whether that was to come back to the UK from Hong Kong, uh, or that was to progress onto another position, be it in 15s or 7s. And I mean, I was aware that changes were happening and obviously the Fijian uh, position became vacant. Ben, ben came back to the UK. Um, and really, I suppose, you, you know, getting to, that's the practicalities of it. The, the, I suppose the challenge and the meaning behind it was, you know, having played against Fiji, having coached against Fiji, understanding right. and not understanding um, what the qualities of the Fijian rugby players were and the unique culture you could see externally um, was really, you know, how, how would I fit into that and, and what could I potentially bring to 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 that scenario and you know it, it was it was you know a real tasty challenge when you look at wow those athletes you would have the style of rugby that they play the unique culture that they would have and me coming from my background of 15 aside rugby professionalism um you know being in programs almost since the age of about sort of 20 and being a professional player you know how could you then you know drop in and develop um, a program in Fiji when you know very little about what you are walking into. Right. Um, I had two or three conversations with Ben, the previous coach, and you know they, he was he. I think he was mindful that you know he couldn't fill my head with too much, and really you had to go and 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 see it and be in it um, to be able to understand how you were going to you know take on that challenge. Um, and I suppose the greatest challenge of all was the fact that they were Olympic champions. So. You know, <laughs> yeah. The challenge was go and do it again, and um, I, I suppose you know, in my own personality and the way that you know I have gone about things in my life is that um, you know that, that that as a challenge was was particularly appealing because it's well, you know, can I do it? Can I can I get this group of players or a new group of players or what that group of players and staff were going to look like and put them in a position within. At that stage, it was January 2017. So it was sort of three, sorry, yeah, it was about three and a half years, just over three and a half years that I'd have to pull them into position to be able to go and defend a gold. I wasn't aware at that stage just how much all that meant to Fiji. I had some inkling from the outside yeah. and, and sort of the, you know, the vision I'd have of what had happened after the previous Olympics. But I don't think that would have changed anything in my mind had I understood completely what what and how rugby sevens plays out in the psyche and the mentality and the community and the society of Fiji. And, and now I look back on it. I know there were times when it was particularly tough, but now I look back on it, I wouldn't have changed it for the world because ultimately that was the challenge. That was the right. event that I went through. Um, and as we've talked many times, Jay, that was that was all part of not just my journey, but the journey of, of, of every player and member of staff and anybody who, who had um, or was within touching distance of the programme 
to understand what what we went through and why why it ended ended up working to a level, you know, which enabled us to def, to defend the goal. So so let's talk about the key challenges in the first kind of three sixty five days that you that you faced, expected, unexpected. You, you talked a little bit about, you know, that you didn't really know from an inside view what it was like and what it meant to the Fiji people, um, the Fiji government, the Fiji rugby, the, you know, the heart and soul of Fiji. So so talk about kind of what, what kind of challenges did you face in that first year? I think probably, you know, in my head, the immediate one was was about performance. And obviously, when you come into a position like that, you know, you, you've got your own coaching pride, but you know, you've also got the practicalities around you of a of a squad that had just come out of an Olympics. Um, they'd won that. Um, they'd had a good chunk of time off. Um, they'd gone straight back into a World Series, the first two legs of which I I wasn't part of. I had to see out my contract in Hong Kong before I came to Fiji. So I I started with them leg three and four. Um, you had players who had left and gone overseas. You had players who were looking to go overseas. Um, you, you know, you had to find out immediately where some of those players were in terms of motivation. And really, I suppose the, the biggest challenge for me was about performance. Was about, you know, you had the influence and the culture which had been established previous to me getting there, um, which had brought them success. And here I was walking in as a new coach um, with with different ideas. Um, a different ways of 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 measuring performance and measuring training and um, different techniques, um, and I knew that that would be a challenge. But I suppose possibly in all that, I was not uh, fully aware of potentially how fixed mindsets in in Fiji would would view that change and how it would take a period of time for me to 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 gain credibility to you know bank bank some uh some stock with the players and the staff and in rugby circles and sporting circles that generally comes with with victories um and 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 performing well and then people believe you and i've never felt that more so than in fiji you know there's a huge skepticism about you individually until you start to prove yourself and then there's complete and utter trust um so that was, and in and around all that was, as you've just indicated, were um, the, the, the government, there was the, the FIU, there was the public, there was the media, who all had this huge expectation. Yeah. But at the same time, almost almost this willingness for you to fail. Okay. <laughs> that you could, I, could, I could feel in the background the whole time, whether that was my perception of it, but it was certainly you know, in, it, around me at that time. Um, but yeah, I, I just said probably you know the biggest challenge at that stage was was the performance one. You know, you, you know, you, in sporting environments, you sometimes you get a small window of opportunity to prove yourself. You know, wherever you've been previously, when you get to a new position, you, you know, that three, six, five days or the first hundred days, you know, okay, let alone making change, yeah. is your change or is your input going to benefit the group that you're working with? And if it's not, then massive questions start to get asked. Yeah, and particularly particularly in Fiji where, you know, the position of head coach of the sevens, um, th- that's not like anything I've seen previously. I-, I can't comment too much on many other environments in rugby, but the only thing I can see it's close to would probably be the All Blacks yeah. 15 coach. And, and that, you know, that took a bit of getting used to, and that was part of my journey as well. But I think that, you know, it was, it was, it was performance, but set against a background of, of, of expectation around the position and the team generally and how that performance of team on an international stage is so linked to, um, is so linked to national identity is so linked to pride is so linked to, um, you know, the feeling of, of, of the emotional connection that Fijians have with the game and their country and how they are perceived around the world. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that became apparent very quickly, um, you, you know, particularly when traveling overseas and understanding that there's, there's almost this, 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 this legend that surrounds the team that right. they go offshore and then they prove what Fiji is about. Right. And, 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 and that was, 
that took a you know a little bit of getting used to for certain. Right, and so we'll talk a bit more about the pressure um, that that you experienced through the process because I was part of that with you and 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 really watched you know that pressure of being applied and being experienced and so it was immense um i i, I got to take a deep bow as to as to how you eventually really came to terms with that level of pressure as a as a head coach and the conversations we had so we'll talk more about that in a sec we'll talk more about how you and i really utilize that that kind of uh, um, uh, national identity, emotional connection uh, to, to really um, uh, uh, awaken the players with meaning and, and the hero's journey and bits and pieces that we, that we put on. So, so of those 365, I mean, you, you talked about success and failure earlier on. In that first year, I think you did fail to win the, the World Series. Mm. Yeah. Um, and and that you know what was that like to to not get there because I was there with you when you won the World Series the mm. following year and mm. I watched you punch the ground like yes and that was just that moment was was a culmination I'm guessing of that year and a half you know almost two years of of pressure intensity and and your own personal vision being realised and so. And so let, let, let's start with, you know, what, what started to emerge as your personal vision. And then we'll talk about the vision that, 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 that we created and crafted a little bit as well on top of that. But I'd like to hear what was your personal vision in this as you started to like you've lost a series. You have to yep. face the, the public. You have to face up to the music. You know, this is this is, in your mind. I'm thinking this is well, this is all part of it. But Fiji is different. Yeah, I, I suppose, you know, the, the personal vision outside of, you know, what we, we constructed for the team generally was, you know, the vision was always to to be competing in the top one or two, <laughs> competing one or two, competing in the top two in the world. I always knew, I always knew that, you know, you, you get in New Zealand and you get South Africa, um, you know, America were on the scene at that stage as well. And, and they were able to put performances in. My, my personal um, vision at that stage was consistency of our performance. If there's one underlying principle, it was, you know, producing consistency. And I think that that first year really brought it home to me that we, yes, we could play some unbelievable stuff. We went to Hong Kong and really, you know, had we not won Hong Kong, I wouldn't be sitting here having a conversation with you. You know, it was it was that tight, and it would be made clear to me as well. And you know, that's part of the pressure that goes with it. I understand that. Yeah. But we played some sensational stuff in that tournament, and that really brought it home to me again about the psyche of the group. And in all that was was this, as we you know you've often we've discussed you know, the, the, the fact of, of the, the boys and the, and the staff generally, the whole group being state junkies. And when we were all aligned and when we were on the same message and, and we had that planning behind it and you had that credibility and you had that basis of, of quality coaching and quality um, facilities and resourcing, control then then you could almost lend it over to being Fijian but without that you couldn't you couldn't bank on having any of that consistency in your training environments in your mentality and particularly then when under pressure in a competition right. and I knew that there was players coming in and coming out I knew there's old players who you know who are sort of towards the back end of their career I knew those young players but you deal with that in any environment right. that wasn't what it was it was more around the inconsistencies I'd seen in the first year, the fact that we could play some of the greatest rugby I've ever coached in a one-off tournament in Hong Kong, which, you know, Fiji is completely and utterly intrinsically linked with Hong Kong, tradition, yeah. winning, emotion, everything. I mean, you know, the Fijians even call it their home event, Hong Kong, you know, it's 10, it's 10 and a half hours away from Fiji, but it's their home event. Right. Um, and I think that in the second year, going into that second year, I was convinced that if I could bring that consistency 
in 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 the pedagogy in 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 the in the daily learning in the way that they went about their business not just what they ate you know how they recovered um the gym activities they did the types of training we did but ultimately the way they th- way we i should say we and the they we thought about all of those elements in the unique environment which fiji was and we're so when i say thing i you know it, it, attention and focus intention of our trainings um of ensuring that there were there were measurables for them as they go through that which sounds hard and harsh it wasn't it was conversations it was it was making that leap from just coaching from a transactional perspective to you know giving them the ability to understand their own performance and how they manage that outside of what coach is telling them all the time and that 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 continues right through and that that was continuing when we were in as you know jay that was continuing when we were in when we were in tokyo yeah. that never goes away and that 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 to me is the nub of 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 what my vision was is i wanted to get to a position with players and staff that there was ownership um there was there was understanding um and there was there was all you know as we we talked again about self actualization them starting to understand what their performance looked like not just because i had told them to do specifics in a game and the hardest part in all of that is within my coaching is not just the listening bit you know because ultimately as a coach under pressure you're in there the whole time and you want to deliver but it was it was ultimately losing a little bit of control as well and i still do that i i still even in the olympics there were there were times there where i had to step back and just i had to trust that the consistency would be brought by the process they were going through and that was almost i suppose if you look at the olympics is a nice little example i haven't planned this the first two the first two games we didn't play particularly well you know we were okay we got away we got through it Yeah. But I didn't I didn't lose my cool. I didn't say that this is be all and end all. They worked that out themselves and yeah. they worked out how they got themselves through it. And that was almost a little bit like the first year that I was here. I was in Fiji. By the time you got to the second second when you time to play GB, then all of a sudden the rhythm is starting and the mentality is the same and the message is together and now we're thinking the same and now they're happy and now they're able to control their performance. And now you almost as a coach you're in that position where you, you know you want to be which makes you a better coach in my opinion you know i'm more relaxed in what i'm doing in that position um like that second year when we won the world series it just started to create flow yeah. that flow wasn't because we suddenly found some magic it was because of all the work that was being done around providing consistency in their day-to-day environments keeping them with us and 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 giving them the opportunity to to flex and play with that and getting it wrong at times and reviewing it and having different conversations and them starting to understand all of us starting to understand how that could create create that consistency and that was my vision was right these guys are great athletically they're blessed they're super rugby players um you know there there were some challenges in relation to personality and maturity of personality yeah. and 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 the challenge of pulling them all together consistently not just one off but consistently to be able to see that you can recreate this when you when you like you yeah. just got to follow some simple reminders you know and some simple wow. prompts um so, and that was that was the vision so the message from that that i've gotten and this is i i think this is one of the differences that makes the difference yeah is less is more yeah and and so you know that that fr- fr- from my perspective that's a difference that makes a difference because that's maturity that that as we mature as we grow as we develop as human beings and develop mental psychology less is actually more and so and so that's testament to the fact that 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 what i've seen is you put more trust in the process put more trust in the players put more trust in their development and more trust that their development will will eventually see them through and that's what we've seen we particularly in the Olymp- the olympics was like a mini version of that you know game against japan well snuck in game against canada you know did a bit better and then 
bang, bang, bang. It, it just began to, as you say, click. And, and so, so just in the Olympics, because we'll spend more time on this at, at the end, you, where did you have a sense of, right, we're on track? Um, probably after the Canada game. Right. Because there's, there's certain things that you possibly look for in the group to, to, to assess right. how they are, they are traveling, how they are viewing the next performance. And don't forget, we played those first two games on day one. Yeah. It was, you know, it was, it was different. There was no crowd, you know, Fijians are, 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 are you know, they, they almost on, when they go on field, they take on the 30 odd thousand people that are there with them. You know, the emotion yeah. is so, and that's why Hong Kong is so special because, you know, there's a love affair between Hong Kong and Fiji and Fiji and Hong Kong and, 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 and not having that on the, the first two games was the same for everybody. But I think that it, you know it played a little bit in in, in why why and where we were at. But you know, there was lots of factors in there. But I think that after that evening, and you know again, I, I pay testament to the senior players and particularly Jerry. Uh, Jerry Jerry too, I knows what we're after. He knows almost without me saying it. He knows what I'm after in terms of how we need to be, you know, preparation mentally. Um, and and he drove a lot of that. And again, it's just conversations. It's 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 Talanoa in Fiji. It's going back from, you know, they're taking the trip from from after the winning of the Canadian game, where I have my say. And you know, guys, you know, tomorrow morning we're playing GB, and you know, we've got to be at a level. You know, we 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 we've done some good stuff today. Now we need to move on. We, we're finding our rhythm. And then he takes them back, and then they go and have a Talanoa as a team. Which you know is 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 different. You know he he would take them and they'd sit down together and these don't know can last for an hour, hour and a half. You know, Fijians right. are good at talking like that. Yeah. Um, and and then I knew at that stage that once that starts to happen, right? Um, because it is it is almost as you say it's part of the process. You can't force those things. You can't say right, you guys have a meeting. You know, it it has to be. It, it, he his his intuition his understanding the, him communicating that to the other senior group the rest of the senior group and then them getting back and sitting down and sharing that information has been you know a hallmark of of the group's ability and you know resilience throughout you know what was a tough year um and and i think that yeah at that stage i didn't quite know what i'm not a genius i didn't quite know what was going to happen against gb but i knew at that stage right Okay, when they're getting themselves aligned at that point, they've had two experiences today. They've yeah. taken everything they can from that. You know, you, you breathe a bit of a sigh, but he forgot through those two. Yeah. Where are we going next? Yeah. And I knew at that stage then, when he had that conversation with them, okay, we're, we're, we're somewhere where we need to be. And, you know, if we do get this right against GB, then we're going to be in a good spot. And I think that that was, that was almost the, you know, the, the, the catalyst then that, that kicked us on. And they did. And so let's talk about the vision um, that we created because it was it was it was it was based on the inconsistency. Well, it was based on the consistency of the inconsistency, which was which was consistently brilliant and also inconsistent. And so I met you in the middle of 2018 in the in the hangar of Fiji Airways. And you and I sat in, in the boardroom overlooking the planes and, and had a good chat about, and one of the things you brought up was just the, the consi you know, I just want this consistency that, I'm, that I don't get. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, bang, I don't. Like, mm. bloody hell, what's that about? I get it, 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 bang, I don't. In these moments where, and we were seeing it, and, and we saw it in the 2018 series, up until in the end at, at London and then in Paris was just... Mm. blew mm. them away after that so let's talk about the vision that 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 we constructed and created uh, i think people would really like to understand that yeah so you know i, I think that as you said you know we I, I was looking for something that could pull it together and, and make a bit of sense and 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 give me give me some some rails on which i could keep in alignment to where i needed to be and you know I suppose part of the inconsistency 
is being Fijian as well. And, and, and you know, I've got to be careful how I say this, but in, in Fiji, things are very inconsistent. Things are day to day. Um, things are not necessarily week planned, month planned. Um, you know, you, you, you live for today, you feed your family um, and you, you, you do, go to church, you look after that. And then the next day you do the same thing, but you don't look week, six weeks in advance. And, and, and all that inconsistency I could see around me in Fiji. And when we talked, you know, I, I'm aware it wasn't just simply about the rugby. It was the inconsistency all around me. And I was like, well, how am I dealing with this? Um, but the vision, the vision itself is I didn't, we ultimately were there in Fiji to produce Fijian rugby. And, and, and that is based on a uniqueness. It's a uniqueness of the athleticism. It's a uniqueness of the skill level. It's a uniqueness of the culture and society and community and faith. Um, and, and when you walk into Fiji, you know, you don't, you, it's quite subtle to start with. You can't quite see it. Once you're in it, it is as blatant. It's just all around you. And it is, it's enculturation, isn't it? Absolutely. And beautiful. Um, yeah, um, absolutely beautiful. And, and, and beautiful and frustrating. You're all in the same moment. Sure, sure. And, 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 and it, it almost a metaphor for, for what the team was doing at that stage. Um, but I also knew that the world, the, get, the sport generally, you know, I get quite frustrated with sports. And, you know, I am love, love soccer, love rugby, love cricket, play tennis since I was a kid, love volleyball, basketball. I'm, you know, I've, I've tried everything. I, I was okay at rugby. Um, but, you know, what you, what you look for then, you know, in, in other sports people is, you know, this game that they were playing in Fiji is loved around the world. And it's as different as I've seen any team sport played in terms of the techniques and the tactics in comparison to any, I mean, I look at cricket, I look at basketball, I look at soccer, Brazil soccer, inner city basketball in America, cricket in Pakistan or, or Australia in the 80s, all that sort of thing. But this is still different yeah. and it's unique and it hasn't changed. And when you get to Fiji and you look at it and you see where it comes from, it's not going to change. This is going to stay the same. Yeah. If, and I don't believe Fijian economy and society is going to change hugely over the next 40 years. They'll still be playing the same game in 40 years. Now, whether the game internationally has moved on or changed, I'm not sure. But what I can tell you is that if it continues like that. So the first part of the vision was it's got to be Fijian. It's got to be benefit. It's got to be around the uniqueness, faith, culture, society, the way they play the game. And I was, you know, I wanted to keep it as that because ultimately that's what I'm there to protect as well because yeah. it's such a good brand. Yeah. The second bit then was how do you put into that without detracting away a, a what I was used to, which was a, a, a professional sporting program and, and the, the, the standards, um, the behaviours, uh, the, 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 the codes uh, that you have to ensure that um, you can keep that consistency, you can measure that consistency. Yeah. Um, certainly from a coaching perspective and you can give them a basis by which they can, they can leap to higher levels. They can, they can see that potential and move beyond that potential, not just once, right. but they can do it five or six times and we can control it. And that, that probably is, 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 you know, the control freak in me in some respects is right. How can I get this to happen time and time again? Yeah. But without, and this is where a lot of probably the, lessons came early without detracting away from the method the mentality of being Fijian and playing and training the way that we do yeah. and I think the third part when we sort of put we, we had sort of the three legs of a stool um, the third leg of that stool was the work that we were doing together Jay which was then looking at, at the mental skills aspect the 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 creation of a mindset which um, was was beyond a one-off performance, but was more around individuals understanding how they can control their own emotions themselves. They can understand performance. They can understand failure and success in the same method. They can understand and and welcome feedback, um, and ultimately, you know, give them the abilities to operate as as good members of society within 
you know, within Fiji, where, you know, these boys were under huge amounts of pressure and scrutiny. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, the, all of those three things were always in that vision that we created. And, you know, by hook or by crook, you know, we, we, we kept pushing each and every one of them, some easier at times than others. Yeah. Um, but that continues right through and still continues. I mean, I'll, I'll go back to Fiji soon and it'll still be the same thing. And, um, you know, I think I honestly believe that 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 is where we started to develop a level of consistency, particularly in our day to day. Yeah. And then and some of the meaning frames, I think it would be interesting to talk about. Um, we, we created uh, a story for them, which was the hero's journey. Uh, particularly around the Olympics and the trials and tribulations and challenges that they would need to go through and then brought it back to their faith, which is the kind of center point, the apex point of everything Fijian and the point of their rugby was about expressing and doing God's work. And so, you know, we kind of linked it into that. Talk, talk a bit about the hero's journey that we created. Yeah, well, I suppose it, it's, there, there's two things. There's obviously from a, a performance or, a, you know, a, a, a level of a journey that you're going to take all together and creating a theme around that, you know, obviously keeping individuals focused, giving them attention, understanding how you travel. Again, this is a group of players that have never played professional rugby outside of what some of them have done in Fijian Sevens. So, you know, their day-to-day -day of, of getting up in the morning and jumping in a car and going to a training venue and training all day and then coming home and doing that for four or five days a week and then playing on the weekend, you know, that's what I had, you know, for 12 years of my life as a player and another eight years as a coach. They never had that. So, you know, the journey itself, trying to give them, you know, a greater understanding of perspective and a longer-term perspective was hugely important for them to be able to chunk down the, the 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 demands that they had on them and and how they went about their business as such, mm -hmm. um, and as you say, in amongst or, or, or alongside that hugely the unique nature of of faith mm -hmm. and um, how that that positions itself within everything that we do, and that's a given. That's a given, um, and you know something that was in the environment when I when I arrived yeah. and something that we've embraced and moved with as well um, and is particularly powerful for us. But I suppose in the hero's journey, it was a little bit of running the faith element alongside a, probably a more formalized version of, of what the, the, the 12, 18, you know, 24 months looked like. And, you know, you and I sat down and you, you, you prompted me on this in relation to, you know, the, 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 how the hero's journey is used by authors, by script writers and the likes in developing um, a, a, a story um, for Hollywood movies or books um, whereby, you know, you follow a train um, to, to get to a destination, which is, you know, almost the one that sticks out in my head is the rocky one where, you know, yeah. you, you see all the trials and tribulations. He goes through the humble beginnings that he comes from. He gets challenged and tested. There's somebody in his life who is is his guru. Um, then, then you know, you get challenged and tested again. You fail. You get up. Yeah. You go at it again. And then you eventually build yourself to the crescendo, which is that performance which you need to put together based on everything that's gone through that hero's journey and and i you know i love that i'm a sucker for all that and yeah. um and 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 what was what was particularly amusing in some respects is amusing was that it is. I, I i could not have guessed that the year that we had would give me so much information and uh, for that hero's journey from, you know, the, the lockdown in, in, in Fiji, humble beginnings, going back to playing sevens rugby in their villages, yeah, um, yeah. you know, playing in every part of Fiji that we could. And then, you know, getting completely locked down and ending up in isolation. And then, you know, we, you know, why so <clears throat> excuse me, Waisali Sarevi coming in as the guru um, and giving and imparting that wisdom of where the boys needed to go and what they needed to do from a Fijian perspective. And then the parables and learnings of faith every day around us, 
um, and how they were used by by Master Nather, who's our S and C coach, yeah. to yeah. bolster the the whole impression of the hero's journey. And then, you know, in some regards, my my job in the hero's journey was relatively easy. I was just picking out, you know, where we were at and what we were going through, and just oh. giving it perspective. Um, and 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 you know, you, you look back and reflect on it, and you know, as as it was unfolding, you're never quite sure, are you? But I think what was good about us as a coaching staff is that, you know, we, we, we were aware that whatever we were going through could be put as part of this hero's journey. Um, and that, as we've often talked, that, that consistency, I believe, was based on a huge amounts of resilience. And that resilience was communicated um, regularly through, through faith meetings, uh, low to services, yeah. and also reflection on and perspective gained by having a theme of a journey that we were taking together um, and fitting those experiences in to give them that story. Yeah, we nar- so, so what I saw is the narration of the story as it mm. unfolded. So it was, mm. like, it was like, you know, we're all narrating it as it was unfolding, utilizing what was happening to, to unfold the story and help them make sense of it, which was just beautiful. And as you say, I, I, I can't find a way that that narration, that the story could have unfolded differently because yeah. every bit of it fitted in to every other bit of it, you know, in, in, including the lockdown uh, in Suva, them not being able to see their families, the almost internal uprising that came out of that, of yep. the players. I mean, I don't blame them. My God, they're missing their mm. families, their children, or, or one, two, three, some newborns. You know, it was it was a crazy time. Yeah, I mean, that, that one. I mean, there's been a bit made in the media, but the whole the whole Jerry one. I mean, that 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 you, know, you talk about a story. If you wanted to make a movie, you know, he 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 packed his bags. He was downstairs. He was crying. He was ready to go. You know, that was on a, on a Wednesday morning. And, you know, he and I had had a couple of conversations. They weren't good conversations. And he wasn't, he wasn't reacting well to being locked down. And, you know, honestly, that's, that's why we won a gold medal. He, he had to turn himself around. And turning himself around, I had to turn myself around. And we had to turn the whole situation to an opportunity rather than, than a fear of, of, of the unknown. And you, you, you talk about stories. Yeah, you know, I can see that as a rocky moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> It was unbelievable and and particularly stressful as a coach. But what I would say is all the conversations we had had, you and I, and as as a coaching group as well, what I was in the ability to do at that stage was keep perspective. And I was able to have those conversations with him, however tough that they were. And we weren't speaking for a few days. He 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 was in a different place. This is the world player of the decade. This is a double gold medalist. He was in a bad space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that journey and that vision and that keeping him where he needed to be, you know, and, and also, you know, there's me. I was concerned about mental health. Yeah. I mean, there was, you know, in, in the COVID environment that we were in and how much he was. I mean, he's such a family man. He's so close to his wife and his kids. It, yeah. was, it was painful for me to see it. Yeah, um, it's painful for me too to be with him as he was going through that stuff yeah. and conversations we had. Um, and, and look, I, I, I got to say that the wider staff, Master Nather, played a huge part in that. William played a huge part in that. Co- uh, assistant coach um, Brad Harris played a massive part in that. And so in our next session, what I'd like to do is I'd like to spend some time on the people difference that made the difference. You've selected an extraordinary bunch of people to come together, the right personalities for the right time. And I, I'd, I'd like to explore the people yeah involved in this process because it's not just a process the people are the people who run the process so why don't we come back uh in a few days or a week's time and we'll we'll discuss all the people next awesome. yeah great stuff man great to spend some time with you thanks buddy now you take care mate speak soon